morning and assalamu alaikum everyone i warmly welcome you all to the episode number 8 of the college research committee's series of webinars on the fundamentals of research and the topic for today's webinar is proposal writing for research grants my name is marak ahmed khan from the second year mbbs faber medical college assistant director team communications in the student research committee and i will be your moderator for the day we are thrilled to have you all here and are excited to dive into this critical topic with professor dr niyaz like i said before this is the eighth webinar of our webinar series and pre conference activities leading up to the third international research conference by the student research committee khyber medical college it is the result of a collaborative effort between the post graduate medical institute pgmi and the college research committee crc kmc this event has been made possible through the dedicated efforts of efforts of dr rubina the chairperson of the college research committee dr iqbal haider the chairperson of the student research committee and it also aligns with the visions of our honorable dean of khyber medical college professor dr mahmood aurangzeb who has always been a champion of the advancement of medical education and research Before we begin though I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items to help you have the best experience possible for this webinar To receive CME accreditation please ensure your attendance throughout the entire webinar our team will be monitoring you We strive to maintain a respectful and polite environment so please be courteous and professional in your interactions ensure that you have a stable and secure internet connection it is preferable that you use a laptop or a desktop device for the best experience our team will keep your microphone muted when listening to the session to minimize any disturbances and background noises do keep in mind that there will be a question answer session at the end of the webinar so you are requested to speak out your questions then you can raise the ra you can use the raise hand option or type your questions in the chat box and we will address them one by one the webinar is being recorded the webinar is being recorded for future references and by attending you can send to being recorded now that that is all wrapped up it is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker our esteemed speaker dr niyaz ali he is a professor in pharmacology and the head of the faculty development unit at the college of medicine shakra saudi arabia he is also affiliated with the institute he is also affiliated with the institute of basic medical sciences in the khyber medical university tower in today's session you will be able to comprehend the concept of proposal writing for research grants by elaborating the key concepts that are involved in this process dr niyaz ali welcome and thank you for joining us So, so without thank you sir so without yeah. further ado i will now hand over the session to dr niyaz dr niyaz the floor is all yours assalamu alaikum everybody and i hope i am audible you are you are you are you are you are listening me properly uh, yes sir we can hear you properly okay so i will proceed uh, thank you very much for the invitation uh, by the research committee of the khyber medical college that today i'm here to share my views on the topic especially get your proposal funded because sometimes you have very good idea in your mind but you feel difficulties to get your proposal funded and it, it it's happening with the uh, all cadres starting from the lecturers to the professors so i will be focusing today mostly on how you are going to get your proposal funded and at which precise moment stage you should be quite vigilant so that you shall not be able to miss the train or this is very important sometime we get our proposal reviewed and at that very stage your proposal is rejected and that is very alarming both for the person who is looking the i mean the principal instigator and even the authorities of the concerned institution 
So the settled learning objective, I'm using the word settled learning objective because these were settled by the authorities here to comprehend the concept of proposal writing for research grant, okay. elaborates key components of the proposal for a research grant and devise a strategy. So my presentation and that will be focusing on a brief introduction to the title, activity for write-up. I will skip this even though I can give you four or five minutes. Rather, we will we will we will take your view directly, and then there will be a feedback or a question answer session after the presentation and summary. So, if I give you two minutes or three minutes, write down your idea in a paragraph that you may foresee to be with a proposal to be funded. So, so I give you just three to three minutes. And have your you 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 might be having your idea in your mind. You want to get write a proposal on that, and you want to get that funded. So I give you three minutes. Just think on that and just write up with you four or five lines. So your time start now. It is ten fifty forty six. Uh, everyone, just know that you are requested to write your proposal in the in the chat box in the form of a chat, short paragraph. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, we give them three four minutes. So at ten fifty, I will be with them. Just an idea, brief idea that I want to get a proposal funded on this particular topic, where my main prospects will be like this. Only that. Okay. Uh, for time management, so I'm I'm back in time. Uh, are you finished? So, so keep your ideas and point with you, and we will come to that later on. Should I proceed, the moderator? Uh, yes, sir. You can proceed now. Okay. So what is a proposal? When we talk about proposal, propo it is something like proposing, you know, and you are quite familiar with something that you are going to propose. So I leave it on you, proposing your ideas and its relevant uh, practicality for a targeted outcome. So it may be a single outcome and it may be uh, more than one outcomes. When we talk about outcome, so you are quite familiar with outcomes. So the outcomes are usually determined by the programs who is going to fund you. Thus, your idea should be in alignment with the current trends and the demands of the country or the funding agency. This is the basic step that we mostly ignore most of the time. When we come across with our students, they have a have very good idea. When we talk about in a, our university about them, who is going to fund you in their totally uh, what you can say blank then they say of course the university will fund us and nowadays you know the status of the universities and even the with this global recession you know in the economy so even good universities when we when we approach them they say and even in the uh, in the in the in the technological advanced country they say we are dry so now the trend is changed the trend is that you will have to write your proposal keeping in view the funding agencies' uh, priorities, their targeted outcomes, and if your outcomes, the research prospective outcomes are in alignment with the targeted outcomes of the funding agency, I, I, I can assure you that you will be you will be one of the competitors. We, I'm using the word you will be one of the competitors because in the sense nowadays competition is at its peak. So key elements of a good proposal. There should be outstanding science. You have to prepare, prepare your proposal with respect to the funding agency as we talked about, and then care in presentation to avoid mistakes. This is a very technical point. Sometimes you have a very good idea, but you are not going to transcribe or write that in a proper way. Only you know the, the, the details, 
and the nitty gritty of your proposal. The other are not knowing. And remember, one of the funding agency is you know, in, in, the, in the regulatory authorities, all of them are not scientists. They are just uh, with the MBA degree holders. They are not health professionals. So what your, your, your summary shall be in a very general, what you can say, the wording shall be very general so that it shall have a very, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, beneficial effect to the society in common language. This is a very technical point because the usually the, the authorities are, are, are you, sometimes you say that I wrote, I wrote a very good proposal, but the reviewers are not understanding my proposal. I, I, have, I, have, I have come across to my, with, with my many colleagues and then they say the HEC or the other funding agency or the regulatory authority, they shall change the reviewers. Yes, it may be a case, but in generally, when an assistant director sits, director sit, 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 sitting with a, an MBA degree holder, so he will be just looking from the public interest point of view. So you see, when 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 you when you when you are a student of uh, forensic and toxicology, so say, and you are reading any any law book, so there is a statement in the public interest, in the public interest, you know. So what is in the public interest? So only those general person, not the scientists, you have to get the sympathies of those persons as well. And for that, the summary of your proposal, there should be a brief summary of proposal in a common language, not properly in a scientific language. So that is one of the key to success as well. Thus, you should know your, 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 your proposal. You should know your field as well. You should know the computer, the computers and the competition as well. And you should know the funding agency as well. If you know all about these things, then you are, you are on the right track. But if you know only your proposal and you know your strengths and you do not know your competitors, it will be difficult for you to get your proposal funded. And you shall, you shall know your field as well. A person who is writing a proposal who is not expert in his her relevant field because your CV will be attached with this relevant documents will be with this because you will be one of the principal you will be one of the principal investigator you will be one of the uh, principal investigator so if your CV if your CV do not match you, your CV do not match with the with the with the with the proposal at the back so then you will be in hot water that is why the concept of the co-supervisor is there and the co-principal investigator is there so you shall back your proposal uh, in the relevant field with the, a co-supervisor who can really help you uh, to get your proposal funded as well and of course the funding agency when we talk about the funding agency so you shall know their outcomes of the program as well then Knowing your field, let me explain all these things one by one. So knowing the field, that field is the work, fundamental to the field is your work, is fundamental to the field where you are working, where you are backed by your experience. What are the implications of your work? Does it make use of emerging technologies? Can it be done on time? This is very important and the budget claim sometime uh, when a proposal is sent to, sent to you back then they say that it requires more time curtail the budgets or increase the budget so you should know all these things as well you shall not only focus on the science as well so knowing your competition this is the third point the second point what is your competitor there are many people trying to get the proposal, their proposal funded. How does your approach differ than your competitors? And you know what are competitors? Competi competitors are those who are having the same experience in the relevant field with the relevant publication record. Then you have to beat them scientifically. Can you get the, their first? This is a, a key point to remember. And then your competition may review your proposal. This is a technical point to remember as well. 
So you shall be mentally ready for that as well. Your early contribution to the work. This is very important as well because this will strengthen your 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 your, your credibility in terms of giving you the give you terms of giving you you get your proposal funded from the funding agency. So never try to write a proposal in the area and we in we where you are new naive to that particular area. You may be having a very good idea and proposal in your mind, but you have to make a teamwork as well. So now knowing your funding agencies, now you know your competitors. Now knowing your funding agencies, what are their overall funding priorities and how are these decided? This is a technical point to remember. Sometimes we write a proposal, it's very good, but it is not in line with the primary objectives of the program of the funding agency, though it falls within the domain. For example, for example, this is the these are the boundaries of the funding agencies. And you write a proposal. This is your proposal. This is your proposal. So a very short, tiny area you covered. So which proposal will get funded? That, that proposal will get funded very easily, which is having more overlapping with the, with the objectives and targeted outcomes of the funding agency. This is a technical point to remember. Though you are right, though you are kept competent, though you are very pertinent, you, 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 it, it falls within the domain of your sense. So when you write a proposal in this, uh, I'm sorry for my wording, materialistic word, you shall you shall keep in mind the 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 the, the aims and objectives of the funding agencies or of the program that who is going to fund you. If you are not here aligned, trust in me, it will be very difficult for you to get your proposal funding. And if you are very much aligned, trust in me, you are in the competition. So visit your funding agency, give presentation. If your project is a mega project, especially in a public health like projects, you have to go ahead and then you th these meetings usually be avoid. For example, in university, when we sit, so we say, I have sent my proposal, let them send me the review and I will reply. But those who go and visit them, and sometimes the management and the person sitting in the regulatory authority, they may give you a very good idea and thought as well. That look, if you go ahead with like this, this one, your proposal, it will be very easy for us to, to, to get your proposal funded. Because sometimes, which is not things that are not portrayed in the paper documents in the program, but they are in the meeting, the authorities are in the meeting and they may, they, in your discussion, you should be quite vigilant with them and they will tell you the priorities of the funding agency program. So, so meeting is encouraged with the, with the authorities or the regulators being involved in the funding, uh, in the funding agencies. Then project follow-up, paper presentation, and uh, press releases, these are also important, especially when you have an ongoing project. So in, uh, to go ahead for an overall look, you shall be quite uh, expert in science, which is because without science, it is difficult for you to write a proposal. And then management of the project, and then the budget as well. So you have to keep in mind these three points. Science shall be perfect, how you are going to manage your proposal at your side, and then the budgets and budget and timing. Timing. This is very important. And if all these things are good, then you are in the, within the competitors. So the process of winning a funding source is just now to start, you will have a fun proposal writing phase up. Regarding the proposal writing phase up, you see different, different funding agencies use their different uh, format. Keep in mind. And you have to use their own format, the format of the funding agency. If you use your own format, then they will not, even the system will not accept online, you see. So proposal writing and the prescribed format, that's very important. Then it will be sent for review 
the reviewer's comments shall be addressed properly and then you may get your proposal funded. But what about the reviewer's comments? I personally, I have uh, been the principal investigator of six research projects and Alhamdulillah that is uh, millions of rupees. So in one proposal, I got the review, so review two, three reviewer's comments. The third one was late, but the first one and the second one, one was in my favor and the other was totally against the project concept. Then the assistant director of the higher education commission sent that those particular reviewers comment to us. So once we were addressing the comments of the reviewers, so those who are with us first, we wrote, we replied them first. Sometimes we make a mistake. We say that this particular reviewer number two has made was very uh, against the proposal. Let me address him first. Start your start your 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 uh, review reply with the one which is in your favor. So, for example, if there are, there are two reviewers, reviewer number first and reviewer number two, and reviewer number first is in your favor, and reviewer number two is totally against your proposal. So, while replying the re reviewer number. Reviewer number two, which is against the proposal, what you will do, you will start with the reviewer's number first, and you will start. St you will, you will, you will appreciate him in a very polite language. That we we th we are thankful to the reviewers for investing their time, that they have been through this, that this this this, and start with his comments. And once you start with his her comments. And you will make that an opportunity now for your sales for the reviewer number two. So there, in this way, you are going to rebut the reviewer number two, which is totally against reviewer number first, which, which is totally against, uh, yes, reviewer number first as well, and against your proposal as well. So you have to convert this reviewer number first comments as in your favor, which is in your favor, to rebut the adverse comments I'm using the word adverse comments. Sometimes it is not adverse. It is in your favor. Remember, if a reviewer write something for you, take it, always take it positively. So do not make this mistake that you will start addressing the reviewer's number two comment first because you initially started with the, the one who is against you and the person sitting on the table in, in the regulatory authority who is not knowing the ABC of the science. So you started with adverse you see, it means you are going to lose the sympathies and the comment and and the and the and the and the feelings of of uh, of the assistant director who is totally having a master degree in uh, business and management and who is not knowing your science. I mean the health profession. So please do not make this mistake. If you start with this first one who is in your favor, what they will do? Then 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 you are going to get the sympathies and the concept of that particular uh, regulatory person authority as well and. Once you submit all these things, you may get your proposal funded. If the funding agency asks for reviewers to review your proposal, sometimes they ask also send the reviewers. So keep in mind, give the list with logical reasoning. We just write their name. If even they do not ask the reason, you have to give the logical reasoning. Why Mr. So-and-so is being listed as a reviewer for this proposal because Mr. So and so has been working since this time from this, this, this in this particular field. For example, in the field of internal medicine, he is professor at this, this college, and I consider him as a potential reviewer for this because his publication record is this, his already and, and in this particular area. You have to write these things in at least two, three lines. If you do not write these things within two, three lines, what you will do. The assistant director sitting there will be looking for the another one. And if you now you are making the work easier for the director, because sometime in the higher meeting they ask that how 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 the project was who reviewed the project how was the reviewer. Mostly complaints goes from 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 the principal investigator to the to the authorities uh, by the scientists. I mean the those who are the those who are writing the proposal about the reviewer mostly mostly if you sit together mostly the complaints are against the reviewer so if you adopt this strategy that you give with the logical reasoning that mr so and so has been the reviewer so you are making the work 
of the of the person who is not expert making his work easier so he, you are you are getting his sympathies as well never think that you will send the reviewer list and the program director or the funding agency will send it to them concentrate more on the sense as we talked about so responding to reviewers comments where do you stand if you are responding to reprise you are already in the winning area remember you are in the top list do not get that as an adverse remarks against yourself or your project be patient while you write keep in mind the assistant director i mean the fund the person sitting in the funding agencies on your side because you are addressing the reviewers comments if he was not on your side he might have dropped your proposal at this very stage so he is already on your side distinguish between your errors and the reprise errors as well converts reprise error into opportunity as we talked about reprise errors you have there is one reprise repri the second the, we talked we gave two example of two reprise one is in your favor and the other is not in your favor so how you are going to convert that to your opportunity so during proposal writing a good research proposal demonstrate innovation and significance within its field of study this is very important when we talk about innovation so usually the people say that novelty shall be there novelty shall be there when we see a, a proposal of a phd or mphil they ask about novelty and where is the novelty that is a separate issue because it requires a separate session that what is novelty what are its types and what is added on novelty for example if i give an example the when when we when we were in the hyper medical university and uh, uh, proposal come to the advanced study and research board it happens all elsewhere not in hyper medical university in all universities whether that is medical or general universities especially in advanced study and research board so they ask about novelty and then they google at that specific very time that already work is published so there is there is so there is no uh, they, they usually tell you there is no novelty though novelty is gradually added on so that is a separate issue but i will tell you that your 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 proposal shall have some added on novelty it should be innovative and uh, it shall be of credible significance within its relevant field then uh, when i talk about relevant field renewable field here mean that it is in a line with the program objectives of the funding agency with with your proposal objectives otherwise it will not be considered even for review so what is a proposal outline usually summary is there i talk that this abstract is there and intellectual merit is there but you have to follow the standard format of a funding agency like higher education commission or any other funding agency they have their own or like for example khyber medical university or your university is going to partially fund that so we have our our own adopted format and that format will guide you that you start with the, your abstract and then you write the abstract you write the summary remember the summary or the abstract general summary or abstract some in some time in the format usually two types of summaries are there one is scientific and the other is for general as i talk as i said in the beginning and that general summary is just for a common layman because sometime in the meeting uh, all of them are not uh, scientific expert by virtue of the of the uh, constitu constituency of the committee for example one person shall be from the pharmacology for example in a the other is from the internal medicine the other is from pathology but one a nominal for example social uh, sociologist is there there is another common man who is not uh, a health professional their general two members are there in order to get their sympathies you have to write at least as i said in the beginning your project summary in general general common english so that they can digest these 
particular uh, uh, clinical scenarios or in which you have written or your science and then they will be also on your side and they will support you in the meeting as well so you have to follow the standard for, for st standard format then the project description project okay. then the project okay. description and the introduction introduction to the title you know all these things research plan is there there shall be objectives and objective shall be smart remember these objectives and aims and these shall be in line with this if you are you are aligned here it means you are you are you are on the right track then review of the prior research you do literature search once you do your literature search then you review it so one is literature search remember one is literature literature search and the other is literature review literature review literature search is something else that you relevant related literature published material already available on the databases or on the search engines so you do literature search then you take the relevant one and once you take the relevant one so now you are reviewing them and once you review it you get some you may get something in your favor and something against your proposal so a gray area is determined and if you are going to determine that particular gray area then your proposal will be on the right track but remember this is what when you are have a pre plan open hand but when you are getting your proposal funded then you must you must focus on this particular aims and objective so supporting data shall be there methods and procedure shall be clearly written it shall be already it should have been already being your approach shall be scientific expected result and outcomes there shall be in the public interest public interest and the interest being targeted here by the in the funding agencies aims and goals and utility then 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 its utility in education this is very important utility in education mean when we talk about novelty 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 means something new so it mean you are generating data it mean you are generating data is a set of information so it mean you are generating knowledge it mean you are generating knowledge so remember one is knowledge generation and the other is tail carrier so if your proposal is having sufficient novelty sufficient novelty mean add it on novelty so you will generate knowledge and those countries who are generating knowledge they are the problem solver as well and we are sometime not generating knowledge we are just replicating them so my point of view is that you generate knowledge then you apply this in your education system when we talk about education system so it means that it is your education system will have its own priorities its goals its vision every program will have your own vision so that shall be in line with that so it's not only the funding agency that you shall focus on that it shall have a trickle down effect ultimately in the education system as well and if you are going to incorporate this anticipate this in the very beginning funding agency will not be asking for that then then those who are non technical they will be always on your side as well so in other word you are integrating and uh, the research and in the ed education system as well so that is why mostly in the professor 
ship level they ask about teaching and research experience teaching and research teaching and research so budget and schedule shall be properly mentioned within the prescribed format if you are using higher education commission format and the funding agency is higher education commission you have to find you have to use their respective uh, format as well remember their format is just like on a proposal outline so what they ask from me you have, from from you you have to follow that and once you follow that your proposal will be completed but you have to focus on the science as well and in the conclusion your conclusion shall be shall be shall be shall be uh, scientific of course nobody sometime your study result is something else and in the conclusion we give some other recommendations so conclusion shall be based on your results only some myths now uh, proposal writing technical and scientific merits alone determine winners this is one of the myth as well as we talked about in discussion proposal should always be written for the top expert in your field no it shall be written for the for the for the priorities of the funding agencies only peers picks proposal do not ask your colleagues to review your proposal appreciate it anyway some myths more myths it's a good idea to submit the same proposal to several agency follow up your own writing style do not follow your own writing style file the format of the funding agency do not worry don't worry about schedules and deliverables this is research reality reviewers often do not read proposal carefully i personally i am the reviewer as well we do see it and sometimes we are late as well so reviewers often do not read proposal carefully and they frequently look for the big idea reviewers also look for reason to deny the proposal there should be no holes mean your proposal shall be scientifically sound reviewers are not always experts managers make the final decision and influence the process this is what i was referring to in the previous my discussion so if your summary if you have two one is the abstract if that is scientifically and summary i am not yeah. making a confusion between both of them remember both of them are the same but you make the summary or another abstract in a common language then then you will get the sympathies of those person as well who are one of the influencers in the final decision making as well so what peers wants these are the points that peer wants innovation and significance responsiveness to program program mean who is the funding agency hello yeah i believe sir somebody joined in with their uh, mic open yes. but they have been muted you can carry so, on so so responsiveness to the program program mean the targeted outcomes of the funding agency funding agencies and uh, you should be responsive your your responsiveness shall be there if it is not responsive responsiveness is less then you it will be difficult for you and care in writing the pro proposal it shall be scientifically sound capability to accomplish the objectives as well you shall have the capability and this will be your your, your cv principal investigator and co principal investigator so do not put uh and friendship the name as a co -sup supervisor or co principal investigator always look at their 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 back their research in that particular relevant field and put their names so what managers want proposal that fulfill programmatic priorities no du duplication from where you will come to know if it is an ongoing projects and program when you have a meeting with the assistant director and the manager they will say please do not go in this side because we have already funded a proposal on this and if you go on this one so we may we may give you so what we may give you you we may we may we may give a waiver to you as your proposal may be funded so a meeting with the these managers is encouraged which we do not usually do it especially 
in ongoing projects. This, this is very true for the ongoing research projects. Investigators who are good to work with, so no, no, no black marks. I mean, always deliver on the promises. No, so what you can see is the managers want a scientifically sound proposal being written up. Written is there. The reviewer are addressed, and what is the program objective? If that is aligned with that, then you can get your proposal funded. In summary, begin with innovation and significance. Treat programs like uh, customers. You need to be responsive. Responsive mean to fall within their aims and objective. To your interests shall be in line with the interest of the program, and get as much feedback as possible. And this is possible through the follow-up that we usually uh, ignore uh, uh, in most of the cases. So. To get your proposal funded, your proposal should be scientifically well written, and you should have good PR relation with the, with the, uh, with the, with the managers and the directorate who is going to fund you. Thank you very much. If you have any question, now you can ask question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Niaz, for that uh, insightful presentation. That was indeed very informative, and I'm sure everyone here has had quite a lot to learn. You addressed the important point as to how to make our proposal different from our competitors so that we may beat them scientifically, and also to align ourselves according to the aims of the funding agency and addressing all the gray areas. I believe all of this goes a long way in helping to strengthen our proposal for a research grant. We will now open the floor for questions. Please use uh, the raise hand function or type your questions into the chat box and we will address them one by one. Uh, sir, I believe starting off, uh, we had a few questions. Uh, the first question was if you could mention some common funding agencies from where you have availed funds so that we can send them a proposal. Yes, uh, it depends on the uh, system, I mean environment. If you, for example, your college of physician and surgeon shall look for the funding agencies. If you are in a university, of course, post-graduation is always done in the universities and higher education commission itself is one of the funding agencies that get their, get, get, get their funds from, not only from the government of Pakistan, but they make university, academia and industry linkages and they get uh, their proposal of the student being funded from different sources. Similarly, WHO is there. So it depends where your proposal and trust are, your interests are there. And there are so many funding agencies globally as well. But they will not allow you directly. They will, you have to go through your affiliation as well, as I said. So for health professional, yes, World Health Organization, usually in the public health, and similarly, Higher Education Commission. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, knowing about the College of Physician and Surgeon Pakistan, but since they are looking for the fellowship and the post graduation, they must do it, and therefore, and they will be doing it. So, funding agencies, are, uh, business incubation centers are there. For that, the business incubation centers nowadays in the universities are there. Have a medical university and all university as per the director of the higher education, they will have their business incubation centers and office of the ORIC as well, office of research and innovation. So we are on the right track. Right, sir. Uh, so next up, uh, Dr. Zia was asking the question, if a proposal has been approved by two agencies at the same time. So he wants to address the scenario as to explain to what should we do if a proposal has been approved by two agencies at the same time. First, you shall not do this practice. Ethically, it's not fair. But if it is approved from the two, uh, uh, what you can say, what is, Dr. Zia, what is in your mind? Of course, you will go for which one? Hmm? You have to be right from one and you will follow the procedure. And the second one is, I will go for the one which is financially sound. But this is, I will, I will say it, it's a malpractice. Do not do it. 
right sir thank you uh, next up uh, we had a question in the chat box that can we take uh, help from ai that is artificial intelligence in our right up can we take because your uh, voice the help was... of the, can we take the help of ai artificial intelligence in our right up it's a very good question artificial intelligence when we were students in the 10th class we used to read that computers and still i remember the wording of my 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 teacher and he dictated one sentence though computer is a marvelous miracle comma yet it requires the skills of an expert so all tools you can use it nowadays different journals are using that if your proposal has been written to the artificial intelligence tool so you shall mention that and you will go for the plagiarism as well so yes you can use it so artificial intelligence is I mean you are using the modern technology as a tool but what is in your mind that is being extracted that you are going to use the data of artificial intelligence artificial intelligence data from where the data comes this is your own data this is the previous published data which is programmed which is programmed and you are going to use this for your proposal writing you can write but i will repeat my wording as the wording of my one of my teacher that though, although computer is a marvelous miracle yet it requires the skills of an expert so yes we can use it but you have to defend it scientifically because computer are just like robots how you feed the data and how you feed the programs wisdom and intelligence okay, is wisdom and intelligence is only with human beings very rightly said sir uh, sir somebody here would uh, want you to shed some more light on the business incubation center that you just mentioned so if they want to chat they can uh, use uh, they can take my email address i will respond them and at the moment i'm out of pakistan and leave so we have our own system that they are in the college of medicine saudi arabia and here we have our own established uh, centers maybe in the hyper medical university we have yes business incubation center when i was leaving this i am on leave so um, we can facilitate them anyone on the research proposal or anything if they want me my help i can i can support them so i will give you my email address and even they can chat me freely uh, right sir uh, sir dr sumia khan wants to ask how to join an ongoing project for learning purposes and which good age, uh, which funding agency is good for somebody who is new to research so it depends on the learning environments of the college if you are the undergraduate students you have your research committee there and it is the or is one of the responsibilities of that research committee that they will prepare their team in the college and i'm sure it is there for example like in the khyber medical college or in other colleges and that is why i am here today in front of them so they should report to their concerned research uh, what you can say committee or research center what what the format of that in the college is and then this is their responsibility to guide that particular uh, person and regarding ongoing projects ongoing projects again will be uh, within the vision and mission of the college or whatever you can say so ongoing projects uh, and then if there is vacancy in ongoing projects the principal investigator usually advertise it for example i had two research projects of the hcc and we advertise it in the newspaper and in the university and we got we interviewed and one one of those who are in the in my interest area for example that was in pharmacogenomics and genetics and epilepsy so uh, we selected those who are very much expert in the relevant uh, field uh, because um, they made my work easy as well because i have to manage my project as a principal investigator so it depends on the interest of the student and on the interest of the principal investigator and an interest of the that relevant ongoing research project as well so you have you have to focus on that 
right sir uh, sir dr rubina gol wants to know how to create a realistic budget and a timeline for our project a realistic budget so regarding budgets formats even the budget formats are there usually uh, principal investigators and uh, investigators the co principal investigator max so their 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 what you can say money for them is uh, already express determined by the funding agency for example per month it shall not be more than this shall not be less than this nowadays if you are going to for example in saudi arabia i was going to file one research project so i made one figure for myself that was 1000 real 2000 real for me as per month as extra because i was involved in other activities so the system told me no it shall not be less than 10000 real so now look so it is it depends on the system and on the formats so this is something about the principal investigator and co principal investigator and regarding that uh, the budget so budget includes the chemicals for example if you are working in the basic sciences if you are working in the field then the transform the translocation and this uh, what you can say lo locomotive all these charges in it includes so it shall be realistic one it shall be realistic the second is that it is already expressed in their proposal uh, what you can say by the funding agency that it shall not be more than this and this segment shall not be less than this nowadays it is very easy so what we shall do we shall read the whole proposal program document what we make a mistake that we read the only objective we write the objective because we are scientists student of science we say that okay dr niaz gave the presentation the objective shall be aligned with that and we forget what is their budget so what happens during submission process you will you will face more difficulties and it will be returned back it will be returned back so my advice to you is that you read the whole document give it time give time to it and once nowadays the funding agency guides the scientists there you about the uri step so project information are always there about a particular program so it's easy uh right sir i believe uh, that wraps up the round of uh, question answer session uh sir i would like you to uh, stop sharing your screen so that i may share the screen for the next uh, posters and our international research conference thank you sir okay all right uh thank you everyone for your active participation and engaging questions we hope you found this session valuable and informative please remember to complete the feedback form that has been sent in the chat box i am pleased to announce our next uh, session in the webinar series uh, that has been uh, titled systematic review and meta analysis it will be held on the 7th of august 2024 the poster for it is being displayed here on the screen our next speaker will be dr shumaila javed i would also like to take this opportunity to share more news of, about our upcoming third international research conference which is a two day conference on the 2nd and 3rd of october 2024 the theme of the conference is bridging the gap between classrooms and clinical venues the poster is being displayed on the screen the registrations have been opened and you can also submit your abstract Uh, with that today's session has come to an end thank you everyone for tuning in we look forward to your participation in the upcoming session and once again thank you dr niaz for your time and expertise really enjoyed the session have a great day everyone allah hafiz allah hafiz